Okay, folks, Thursday night, another session here of doing some painting and uh, working on uh, the finishing touches here on uh, the last two uh, Bowman that I'm working on, for uh, which are actually, uh, they're skirmishers as well. But uh, yeah, we'll finish those guys up. And uh, these two are complete. Just finishing up these last two, and then this is this will be the last two stands of uh, skirmishers that we have to do in uh, and uh, paint uh, the shirts on these two figures, and uh, then it was time to uh, wrap up and go to work. So hopefully we can uh, finish up uh, these guys tonight. All right, so we're gonna set the completed guys off to the side, and um, yeah, pick up where we left off. I know after we're done with these figures, we're probably going to go ahead and toss this thing out. It's about time for a new, uh, a new painting sheet there. So and that's actually one of the things I was looking to get forward to getting at uh, Historicon this year was uh, get more of these reserved. Although I'm only using about now, I'm going through about two of them a month. So um, yeah, we'll have to. Hopefully I don't have to mail order these. And I know I could probably use parchment paper, but I like the fact that these are already pre-cut to the size of the um, of the palette. So uh, I like that. So at the risk of um, staying up all night, I'm going to be drinking some coffee just after 8.30. So uh, I don't think I'm going to finish that whole thing. But anyhow, uh, so hopefully we can start working on um, on the blade stands. So. Anyhow, so we've got the two shirts done. So uh, I was trying to do two guys at the same time, but that didn't work out really well. But I probably am going to try it as well. We're going to go ahead and knock out the um, go ahead and knock out their skin tone. So let's find a spot over here that's uh, has some space to work with. Uh, I think we still have some of this red leather. It's alive. We do, and is the black alive? We do. Okay, good. All right. Well, we don't have to pre we don't have to mix anything else. We can just work with what we have here. This was put down uh, the day before yesterday. I didn't get any painting done yesterday uh, evening. Just didn't work out. So got started way too late. So if I don't get started by like eight thirty or something at night, it just isn't going to happen. But I still do most of my painting in the morning so I may be able to squeeze a painting in on Saturday morning so some of you guys across the pond can participate in if you choose to and we're just gonna go ahead and paint him all in this color right here all his face all his facial features and this is again for those of you who haven't seen my skin mixing thing this is uh, Vallejo uh, red leather that one. I can't see why I don't have my glasses on. Here we go. Red letter 136 and black. That's what I use as my uh, the 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 dark shading on the uh, on the flesh. So we're gonna paint. And this guy doesn't have shoes. Perfect. Typical Irishman, no shoes. <laughs> Maybe not now, but back then. Supposedly. I'm just going to do all this guy. And same thing, we're going to paint the eye sockets as well. Because for some reason, all these figures seem to have bug eyes. So because they have bug eyes, I have to paint their eyes. Or it'll look weird. Um, I actually don't go out of my way to do that. Just sometimes it works out that the, the casting is so defined that I have to uh, provide the eyes in there or it just looks weird it's it's like too big of a an opening for to be believable that i i don't have to show the um 
the eye on there. I can't get away with just doing slits, so. All right, so we've got uh, the face. Yeah. Take a sip of the liquid motivation. I guess there's some people that drink alcohol while they paint. I would not be one of them. It puts me to sleep, so. I'm the opposite. Uh, caffeine is my preferred drug use <laughs> by far. Gets things done. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit more of that red leather in there. And then let's see if we can get away with this brush or we have to go one smaller. Paint the kneecap and just around where the, what the sculptor gave us here to work with. Fingers. Been trying to read some uh, history of these guys. I'm not really familiar with, um, well, it's not my area of uh, expertise. Let's just say that the um, British Isles history. Yes, I have cursory knowledge and stuff like that, but uh, I was watching a program on, um, I'm gonna be gearing these guys towards the, um, the, well, they're medieval Irish, but I'm gonna gear them towards the time period of uh, Edward the Bruce's invasion at the 1315 and um, invasion of Ireland. And um, so I was watching a program. I decided to, I had some waiting time today, so I decided to turn on something to see what they had on YouTube. And it was a pretty decent program on it, a uh, documentary with some live action, kind of the background information and uh, been enjoying watching at that. Of course, I didn't realize it's actually three parts and they're each about an hour long, so it's pretty involved there, but um, I always like historical gaming because it forces you, well, it doesn't have happened. And uh, that's the appeal for me, so. Um, We're almost done with this right here. We're probably gonna go ahead and and paint the eyes next. And a smaller brush. We're gonna put some fresh white that can uh, that can flow a little better than uh, what normally is because we want to make sure that we don't have a hiccup doing the eye because if you end up putting the paint too thick in there it's a pain to get out so all we're going to do is literally just put a little dot in there and Just a tiny little bit. And a tiny bit on the other side. Oh, what we got here? We've got, uh, oh, man, I wish this chat box wouldn't disappear. John Peter, how are you? Boy, it's late where you're at. It must be... Darn near two in the morning. You a night owl? <laughs> I'm more like up till two. I am. Uh, if I stay up much past 11, I'm worthless. I don't know if I can. I'm not a, I'm not a night owl. Used to be, but not now. I wake up at five o'clock every morning. I'm not a, I'm not a night owl. Used to be, but not now. I wake up at five o'clock every morning, so uh, even on the weekends, to uh, to be quiet and do some painting or whatever it is else that I need to do. So with the eyes, I don't want to put it. I don't want to put a dot. I'm going to put a vertical line.
and that usually suffices and works better. That's enough to just real simple like that. And now we go back to doing our face where we left off. So what did we leave off on? We uh, we're going to add more of of this right here. Let's uh, let's put a little bit more of it down. Okay, so let's put that. Uh, John Peter, you're in Germany. Is there a, I, I would imagine that there's not a very big war game scene in Germany, or that seems like what it is, or maybe in years past that was the case. Um, those, the Euro games were more popular there. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but, um, I don't know if those kind of things are frowned, frowned upon because of uh, past things that happened in the 20th century, but um, uh, that seems to be the case. Um, I know that I used to build models a lot in the past and uh, big World War II fan of building that and some some models, especially aircraft, if you were building Luftwaffe aircraft that were on their tail, that uh, of Luftwaffe aircraft, that some of the um, decals didn't come in the uh, did not come in the kit if they were uh, if they came from certain countries, and a few other countries actually what they did was they actually made it in two parts so. It wasn't a symbol that was frowned upon, but you could put it together at home and it wouldn't offend anybody. But uh, I'm sure that's still the case now, but um, I don't do World War II stuff um, currently, even though that's really my period. I really uh, enjoy war gaming that, that conflict. <clears throat> I just, and I mentioned this before, I, I like doing the kind of detail in World War II games that just makes them unplayable. So um, I kind of stay away from them. It's kind of the opposite of uh, what I'm doing now. I'm doing kind of generic, vague, medieval and, and ancient war gaming with this DBA system. And uh, the World War II games I used to play are quite the opposite of that. Very detailed and very specific and you know, you didn't just use a Sherman tank, but depending on which model it is and did it have wet stowage and all that kind of stuff. So uh, pretty involved in that. That's the first kind of history I enjoyed growing up was uh, World War II stuff, so. It's funny when you come from a background of that is what you're working on and trying to produce you. You can, you tend to complain as a modeler that you wish there was a color picture of this or this coloring, this color, this picture in color. So you could color match or anything like that. And then you move to moving to medievals and ancients. And the next thing, you know, it's, you would just wish there was any kind of documentation on, on this conflict that supposedly happened and nothing survives. So it really kind of puts everything into perspective that pretty much anything in the 20th century is, or I guess now 21st century, but any, anything modern really is best with being able to have pictures and documentation, and things written about it, not uh, like these ancient texts that uh, things are forgotten. You know, hundreds of thousands of people have suffered and and conflicts and, and all that, and, and, some, and they've just been forgotten in many times. So that's really pretty sad, so. Uh, and again, I'm not promoting war or anything. It's just, uh, you know, it's, you know, the way I look at it is war. But I imagine people that watch horror movies don't want to see innocent people murdered and stabbed and slashed. I don't want to see, you know, millions of people die. But I, I do enjoy uh, partaking in, in, in that. But uh, yeah, it's horrible stuff. But it is my morality speech there. But uh, 
Let's see, do we have some other thing? Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, John Peter says, I'm turning into a night owl. With the inability to work, my days are losing structure. You're not working even from home then. Interesting. Um, there are a few hot spots, such as in Hamburg, but we seem to be spread pretty thin. The swastika is illegal, so it won't be shown even on historical stuff. I'm not sure about movies. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. That's uh, that's just the other day, basically. So, you know, um, that's not that long ago. So I can understand that. I just thought there wasn't any war gaming at all because of the, uh, or very much of it. But maybe that's coming back. Actually, there was a set of rules. And I don't remember what it was called. But I was talking about playing World War II. Um, I enjoy skirmish. You know, I've played other, I've played all kinds of stuff. Um, but my preferred scale for World War II would be like skirmish, where you're running like a half squad, so very few figures. And um, the way I like to describe it is, if you've seen the movie Saving Private Ryan, there's a scene where um, one of the characters and hand-to-hand -hand combat in like one room in a house. And that's the kind of stuff I like to simulate, is a really small scale kind of in slow motion as it goes. I'm not interested in playing a game with a ton of miniatures like Flames of War where you're just moving tanks across and I've done that before. Uh, I prefer the, the 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 games that involve, you know, throwing a grenade and you only have two more. Where does the grenade land and you want it to land at the doorway but it bounces and it goes somewhere else and you know what are the effects that's the kind of stuff that I like to simulate. So I'm very limited on the kind of rule sets that kind of encompass that. But there's a set of rules, and I don't know what it's called. It, it's, I think they're still in development. And they actually come from Germany. And they're done in, uh, I think the author does them, not in 28 millimeter, but in 20 millimeter, which is what I, I, I always uh, grew up gaming with because of all the models. Every vehicle is available in 72nd, 76 scale. So, you know, if you wanted to get, um, well, you know, I know they do stuff in 28 millimeter now, but I didn't really grow up doing Warhammer. So 28 millimeter isn't really a, a thing for me, but you know, it, and not until recently were things even available in World War II. And recently, I mean 20 years, okay? That's 20 years is recent for me as far as, you know, war game. If you wanted to buy, you know, if you needed to build a convoy and you needed to buy 10 Oppo Blitz trucks, they weren't available in 28 millimeter scale, you know, but in 170 seconds, I mean, you can go crazy with them, you know, all, all kinds of people make them. But anyhow, that's 20 millimeter scale was the kind of, do, was the kind of scale I did it. And I, I came across a set of rules that uh, I think they're in development and the authors are from Germany. I don't remember what the name of them are and they are very small scale, uh, like I just described. Um, but I just, I haven't done, I haven't gamed that sort of World War II stuff since, in, since. so, um, I'm not saying it's a little, a little late for it. Like it's a little too late for me to get it back involved in it. Cause I still have lots of 20 millimeter stuff. Um, I have probably a platoon of Germans done and, um, maybe two squads of Americans with support weapons. I, I built them for a particular scenario that I got out of a scenario book and I was building towards that. I ran them at a con and then realized, okay, I really like this set of rules that I'm using and I still do. But the problem is unlike in an hour or in an extreme case in an hour and a half or something like that, we played for like four hours and there wasn't any resolution. You have to leave it set up. And then you got to build all the terrain and, you know, and I want the game to look to ask when it's just so easy to play DBA, you know, and I think that that's what, and, and unless you're like a, a tread head or a real anal retentive uh, rivet cam, you're not going to enjoy the kind of games that, uh, that I'm kind of describing. Some people just are happy playing bolt action or something like that. And that's just my, my, not my cup of tea. But there was a set of German rules, and I don't remember what they are. I think they're in development. And the scale was um, one to one. In other words, one figure was one, one person. And uh, yeah, a group in Germany was coming up with them, which was kind of unique because uh, I, at least it seemed like in the past, there wasn't a big war game scene in Germany. I should say historical 
war games because there's you know I think there's Warhammer everywhere, um, but uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't remember what they're called. They look cool. You know what? I think they were only available in German, and since that's not something I. Can... Yeah, when we we were actually coming up with our own set of skirmish World War II rules, not to sell or anything, but um, I was a big fan in in twenty millimeter of making one centimeter equals a meter, because it's pretty close to the figure scale. In other words. It's compressed a tiny bit, maybe 25% or like that, but it was really easy to do, you know, that conversion of meters and, a, and a centimeters. But, you know, you're talking about a, a game scale where, you know, grenade explosion areas can be, you know, like this big. You're talking about, uh, you take into the fact that if you're crawling around a tank, the tank may not be able to hit a figure with its main armament because it's too close to the tank. All those kind of considerations, but it was mainly about infantry combat and the vehicles are there, you know, on the um, on the periphery. It wasn't a vehicle game with a bunch of infantry, and it also was. But they expect you to run a company and make man-to-man -man decisions when you're running, you know, 30, 40, 50 men. You know, that's not really the the purpose of what I was doing. So, um, anyhow, but that's still my um, that's still my period. Okay. What else we got? We got some other activity here. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay, more John Peter. I'm working in tourism and I run guided motorhome tour in North America. Okay, I've had to cancel all my tours in 2020. Yeah, yeah, I go on cruises every year and no cruises for the foreseeable future. Fortunately, most of my customers agreed to postpone until 2021. So I have a lot of waiting to do. Let's hope we can travel to North America in 2021. Yeah, it's anybody's guess what's going to happen in the future. Um, I don't think any of us know. And uh, I, we had a big convention scene plan where we're going to run a lot of games this year. And I'm just, I'm not as disappointed as I am. I, I say, like, get the rug pulled out from under me. You know, you know, next time we're going to we're going to wait until things get back to normal before we decide to, uh, you know, figure out what we're going to go to. I mean, we, we will go back to the conventions, but we're not going to do it until things are back to 2019 levels. Um, more John Peter. We used to play tractics in Canada written by Gary Gygax. Yes. And friends fun. Yeah. Yep, I didn't play that stuff, but uh, we did do command decision stuff, one to five scale type of armor games. Um, had a bunch of micro armor. So there's operational scale World War II games. The problem they have is there's not a good balance between infantry and armor. They're mostly they're mostly based on armor. The stuff you get to do with the armor is exciting. The infantry is just kind of eh. And the shooting ranges of the infantry is so short that their armor would just eat them to bits before they got into that range. So it ends up being, you know, unlike, say, DBA, where I understand you have knights and I have Saloy, there's still kind of a chance. It's very out of balance, I find, with those operational scale games between uh, between armor units and, uh, and infantry. It's just not much fun to play the infantry in those type of games. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of the unfortunate part of it, you know, so, um, okay, so we're adding a little bit, we decided to add the, uh, this leather and we added some of the sunny skin tone to start adding a little bit of that. You guys watch uh, Caucasian painting things. And I say Caucasian because um, if I'm painting like the Middle Eastern ones, uh, the Middle Eastern type armies, uh, I do a tiny little bit different. If I do the um, uh, any 
African or dark skin um, type armies. They're they're totally different. Um, um, I mean, it's still the same thing, but you just don't mix the sunny skin tone in. But um, that's another thing. I got to get my I got to get my fanatic Berbers up to. Uh, well, they're not called fanatic Berbers anymore. What do they call Islamic Berbers? They changed the list from three seventy four to three seventy five. Um, I got to get them 3.0 compatible. I like that army a lot. And um, they got more, um, they have more African foot now. So I've got lots of extra figures to, to paint up for that. So that is uh, another thing on my to-do list. But um, yeah, I'll get to that eventually. At, at the rate I'm painting now, then we'll be able to get to lots of things because this is working out really well for me. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it as well. And uh, if not, you know, like I said, uh, get some painting done and put me in the background. You don't have to look at what I'm doing. You know, maybe I'll say some ramble about some product or something that you guys want to want to use. I actually uh, went to the local stores here and, um, you know, we don't have really any hobby stores, but um, per se. But I went to a couple of stores that I know have like uh, more of these tufts, these army painter tufts, like uh, I used on the basing on my Irish. Um... Like these guys right here, okay? And wanted to see if they had it in a brighter green color because I wasn't really happy with the, the way those came out with... It wasn't that I, I, I liked them to be a little brighter to, you know, say a little bit more Ireland to me. Um, you know, but I don't want to mail order them without looking at the, at the, um, at the color difference. And um, none of the places in town had any. The inventory levels of, of products... Um, I, it have really diminished since um, in the last couple of months since all this got started. So we may just have to hold off. Um, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. I mean, I'm happy with how they turned out. I just wanted to be, I wanted to be, a, you know, a little brighter, you know. And if I do come across tufts that I like, I can always take these off and uh, relatively easy and put other ones on. But that just will be a little bit brighter. So they just don't scream Ireland to me, you know, so. Um, anyhow, let's see here. Uh, more maintenance stuff. Dun, 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 dun. It's easier to play armor games on a PC, especially when you're solo. So, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, PC games of all time. Multiple, mul multiplayer capability. It does, but if you could have multiple people on that same team, so you would have a teammate aspect is this series called Close Combat. I love the Close Combat series. I could cross between micro armor, but I love, love it. It's, 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 it's real time, but it's not so much going on that you can't manage it. And um, I've had an opportunity to play with some other people online, but it's just one person versus another one. But I love that system. Um, it looks good. Uh, it's not very tasking on the uh, on the visuals, but um, yeah, we had some really good games with that, uh, and that's handled pretty well, you know. And um, yeah, we've had some crazy things happen in that game. That's that's a lot of fun. Yeah, com I agree with you. I think the computer uh, moderated stuff uh, works really well, or at least you can scratch that WW two itch, you know. So. Um, Oh, John Mifkovic from Canada, the Great White North, or I hear it's somebody else I, I talked to over Facebook is from Canada, and he was giving me a hard time because he said that it was hotter there than it was in Florida, and I didn't believe him because, you know, we've got like 80% humidity on top of our 100-degree temperature, but uh, yeah, not very Great White North is right, right now. Uh, John says, hi, Tony. If you're looking for replacement sheets for your Redgrass Games wet palette, not yet, but uh, but close. Uh, if you're looking for a replacement, check out Dogs of War Gaming over in Palm Bay, Florida. Yes, this is the people that I got the uh, the map from, The this 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 particular one. That's who, that's who I bought it from at a convention. Um, and they're supposed to carry their product shipping. I, I know, I don't know how much these go for, but a pack of, it came with 50. I would imagine 50 go for probably 10 bucks, have to. Um, but yeah, uh, that's who I got this from, is, um, is Dogs of War. And um, I got it at a convention um, 
April 2019. And this is one of these things that I wish I would have bought um, years ago because uh, it, it's, it saves me a lot of time. It doesn't save me as much paint as you would think. It saves me a lot of time having to bring things out and, uh, and having to make, remix them and everything. So, um, yeah. John Peter says, my PC game of choice is Civilization IV Beyond the Sword. So I played Civilization a long time ago, back on uh, when it was on a 286. You could play it on a PC 286. So what am I dating myself? What's that, 1990, 91, 92, something like that? And um, PC games kind of come in two flavors. They come in games like Civilization and like that that are turn-based. And the good thing about turn-based is you can be really efficient and you can really, if you get the hang of it, really outdo the computer. The problem is, is they kind of put me to sleep because you're not really rushed to get your turn in. If you do a real time, it's the opposite. They keep you awake, but then you're stressed out like being at work. <laughs> yeah, Civilization, I remember playing that and um, got a little tired of encountering Aztec battleships. Know what I'm saying? So uh, the only one that was kind of realistic that I played a fair amount of was, um, what's the one with... Um, Age of Empires. Is it Age of Empires? Um, they had a medieval one. Age of Empires, Age of Kings or something like that. Um, I played that one some. And of course I played the Total War games. Um, I played, when I first got into DBA, uh, I had, the, the game that had just come out was Total War Rome. And it came with a soundtrack. And the first, the first event I ran, it was a theme of the rise of Rome. I brought my little boombox. Hey, it was like the mid two thousands. I had a little CD player, and I brought the little boombox with me, and I had that soundtrack of that playing all the background we were playing in. Hey, I thought it worked really well for the. It's a good soundtrack for for ambiance music, but um, yeah, we played a lot. I played a lot of. Uh, total uh, Total War Rome and uh, the first one and because um, probably about 2000 and 2012 my computer stopped working so I didn't get a home computer until March of this year so I was out of video games on a computer from 2012 until earlier this year. So anything that happened in that year span, I just kind of, you know, I'd, I'd lost track of and didn't get in it. But um, yeah, I like the computer games because they give you a, a frame of reference to motivation to paint the, the miniatures. You know, not I don't like the socializing with random people on the internet on the computer. You know, people you're never going to meet. I just don't see what the point in that is. Um, in a computer game, you know, you'll, they have no vested interest, you know, they could just quit early if they don't feel like it. And you just wasted your time setting up your forces or what have you. So, um, but yeah, they are a nice, um, they're a nice distraction and, uh, sometimes, um, motivator to paint the figures, you know, so, um, When I got back into it, I wanted to, um, I got the, um, I hadn't played a Total War game in a long time, and boy, they had changed a lot. They had changed a lot from, the last one I had gotten was the medieval one, medieval Total War 2. I never got the first one, but the second one, and the next one that I got, which was right, uh, I picked up the Three Kingdoms one, because I really like the Asian stuff, and I like that whole romance of the Three Kingdoms thing, and I've played several of those games in the past with that theme, but it's so much more complicated with diplomacy and who's marrying who. And, you know, I kind of, uh, I played it a little bit and just kind of, I'm sure that if I build a, a, one of those armies, I'll get back to playing it, but it just involved a lot of things that I wasn't really interested in doing things that you like to do in a game. And there's things you don't like to do in a game. 
Um, I've come to the realization that I'm not a strategy person. I'm a tactics guy. So I'm not really interested. Let me give you an example. There's a, um, there's a game that called Field of Glory. I, I have it. And I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, I'm playing with uh, another human opponent at the time. I currently with uh, several games going, uh, one game going on uh, at a time. But um, they also have a strategic version of it. I'm not interested in getting it. I'm, I'm not interested in, in playing the rules like a Europa Universalis, if you've seen any of those, I've got one of their games that's like, man, I'm just, I'm not interested in doing these treaties and stuff with people. I just, give me a battle, give me some forces, and I want to work the tactics and crush them. I'm the general. I don't want to be worried about uh, what kind of pottery we're making at home. That's just not the kind of decisions I want to make, you know, so... Um, you know, and that's good if you realize that, uh, what exactly it is that... Um, or is the kind of stuff that you want to do, you know? So I'm not a strategy guy. I'm a, um, I'm a, um, I'm a tactics person. So. Some people like strategy and don't like tactics. Uh, you know, I just, that's why there's all kinds of different games. Some people don't like any of those and like first person shooters. You know? Well, I do like to, um, I do, but the most strategy I can handle is there's a series of games and it came out on, I was out of the, um, the war gaming scene on a computer for like eight years, I've just mentioned, but I, I had been doing gaming on the Xbox one and, um, they ported a couple of like war games war games that are like counters counter type of war games and one of them is called battle the bulge uh they're made by i want to say they're made by matrix as well and they were ported they're available on the pc but they were ported on to the uh, to the xbox as well and they made two of them in this series that they ported to the xbox the battle of the bulge is one of them and another one is like um uh, push for Moscow or something for rush for Mo something for Moscow. So you've got a, a battle of the bulge one, and then you've got a um, uh, October to January nineteen October nineteen forty one to January nineteen forty two thing, and it's like a counter type game where you've got little counters and stuff, but it's it's simple, but it's not simple, and. Um, it's a very basic looking game, but at the same time, it looks really nice. I like the look of the game and, uh, I played the living hell out of those things. Um, and, uh, I highly recommend both of those, but that's kind of a thinking thing. Like you get to think about, uh, that's about as st strategic as I like it, uh, as I like a game, you know, you can think, okay, well, I'm going to move these guys in here. Cause then they can blitz out out of those games. And I enjoyed them a lot. I wish they made more of them. Um, more different theaters and stuff like that. I think the mechanics are, are very elegant, but maybe they didn't sell well. I, I'm not sure. Um, but I enjoyed them quite a bit. And they were kind of something different because there's a lot of, there's a lot of games out there that are like, oh, more of the same. First person shooters, I don't really want to do anymore. I mean, how many times am I going to save the world from Nazis and zombies and demons? Like, okay, I've done that. You know, like, look, I've saved, I've saved the world like 30 times and you guys keep inviting those bad people back. I'm just not going to do it anymore. <laughs> Let somebody else do it for you. So right now we're just kind of tinkering, cleaning up his flesh color on this guy. And then we're going to add a little bit of white to this and do the same thing. So... And of course, this guy has a mustache because apparently it was an Irish thing to uh, make sure that you had uh, uh, either a beard or a mustache going on. So I tried to pick out figures that had one or both, some of each. All right, so is this alive enough that we can put white on it or that we need to mix up it? And we'll probably just add white to that and probably be fine. Um, I knew I had some fresh one. Here we go. Ooh. Okay. 
Okay, John Peter, Age of Empires has nice graphics. You get the visuals of an ancient game without having to paint figures. Civilization IV is definitely a strategy game. Yeah. Um, I think technically it's a... Make sure I don't get this wrong. A 4X game. And I think 4X game is like explore, expand, ex Anyways, it's that kind of a game where you're on some make-believe planet and you're discovering it as you're building your civilization as well. Um, I figured it was like some four-dimensional type thing when I see 4X written, but that's what it is. So uh, like Civilization, um, the old Empire game, remember that one? I knew somebody who played that incessantly. I'm like, okay, that's en enough of that. But yeah, that's one of those you're discovering the planet as you go, plus you're building things as you go a 4x game i saw i i saw that recently described as that so yeah done that um there's a video game that's out that got a lot of rave reviews called and i'm probably going to butcher the name of it but it's called something like shadow empire it just came out i want to say over fourth of july weekend and it's one of those that takes place in outer, outer space and you are discovering a make-believe planet along with developing your civilization forward and building assault troops and that kind of stuff. And you can assign different people to different tasks and it's turn-based like that. And there's a lot of, got a lot of rave reviews about it, but I just, I'm not much of the science fiction person really, but it's one of those you can encounter like bugs or you know, space bugs or, or some other creatures where or another civilization have to deal with them. So it's kind of like civilization, but in space and it's all in early. So lots of people rave about that. I just, um, I, so I think I'm, I think I'm better off doing this, honestly, because I'll be honest with you. I'll, I'll play head to head games with our game group and stuff. And you could have the worst series of games and you still come back with a smile. But when you end up playing a computer game, at least when I end up playing a computer game and things aren't working or something like that, yeah, I get pissed. I feel like I've been working the whole time for the reward. And when I'm painting, it, nothing's an issue. So I'm like, let me just stick to doing things that are positive and are going to put me in a good mood, not uh, put me in a foul mood. So, And the people that I live with have also appreciate that. I don't come out of the playing games and getting angry. Which, like I said, never happens in face to face games because in face to socializing, but when you're playing against a computer and he's, you know, it's, um, yeah, not my thing. So I think I'm better off. Lots of figures to paint. Lots, of, lots more armies to do. This guy's face is done. Yeah, see, I find this a lot more satisfying than if I'm painting this guy as well. And I'm like, okay, paint everything in the bottom shade, paint everything in the bottom shade. Okay, light it up a little bit, light it up, and then light him up. And then, you know, it's just, it takes twice as long to show an effect. It doesn't work for me. I've tried it before, and it's just not my, it's not my, my thing, you know. I'm not the exception. Most people are like, I don't know how you can paint one figure at a time, but it keeps me on track. And... It keeps me from being, that's a win for me. Oh. It's a little bit, just a little bit of highlighting on the muscles and the toes. Make them pop a little bit. Fingers on the hand. Ah, I lied. I'm gonna go a little bit more white. I'm gonna highlight his, put some highlights on his face a little bit more.
It's actually a pretty decent figure. And this pig figure is probably, I don't know, 30 years old, I would imagine. These Essex figures, I think, have been around for a while. And um, most of them paint up pretty good. Some of them, I just don't like the poses of them. Now, with that said, I griped and griped and griped about this one guy that was in a dumb pose, and I painted him anyways. And now that he's done, he looks all right. And it's this guy here on the right-hand side. He just kind of has this straight arm throwing a javelin, and I think it looks kind of wooden, but it turned out okay. And um, yeah, sometimes their um, their lances and their spears are a little bendy. So I know that one other painter that I follow his stuff a lot. He ends up replacing his he replaces his lances with with uh, with needles, all of them, even though they're in they're in good shape. So. Uh, I may start doing that as well because sometimes they're just they're just too fat, you know. They're too sometimes they're, and, and we're talking about the lances that, that taper from like a a cone at the base of where you hold the hand, um, they and they taper down to like a point. They're just they're just too darn fat. Um, they just don't look um, they don't look the 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 business, you know, from my end. So this guy we're gonna make this guy redheaded, but we're not there yet. We're gonna go ahead and paint his bow, and we should have. Um, we should have the bow, uh, the color I've been using for the bow, um, here it is, for the bow color right here. All right, we're not going to use brown, we're going to just use black. I know it gets a little green, that's okay. Uh, it's more like a little gray. So we're going to paint the, the entire bow in this color, okay? Yeah, I know there definitely has been an issue with uh, keeping things in stock in stores. And I don't know whether it's people purchasing them and not being restocked or just having trouble getting them restocked to begin with. But I guess there's a lot of people that are out of work that have more time to paint. But I'm not one of them. We haven't really missed a beat there at work since uh, all this started. So that's not really an issue. What is an issue is trying to find stuff to do with your vacation days because uh, our normal vacation fares or something like that is just kind of up in the air. So um, I'm going to have to be a little bit more proactive towards the end of the year and make sure that I use up my days because they don't carry over where I work. So. Let's brighten that up a little bit more. It's too drastic a difference. I said in an earlier video, I think one day I'm gonna try you doing the three color paint method, like the foundry system. I don't necessarily have to buy the foundry paints because I have so many, but I mean, I can, I can make my own three color thing, but I just think that it's just not a six or seven different shades that I don't think three is going to cut it. Certainly not for the faces. The faces are, uh, but I'm going to give that a shot maybe at some point in the future, see if I can speed up the process. But um, a speed for me is not necessarily that. It's the cutting out, the cogitating, like, okay, what color should I paint his shirt? I don't know. Will blue look good? Uh, you know, all those type of things. I'm just... Well, these Irish, I've kind of hit the ground running. I know that they're going to be some variation of this um, saffron colored shirt, and I just kind of hit the ground running. And that saved me a lot of time and made me be able to be very productive painting um, this first batch of these figures. So, And the blades are the same way. The blades are going to be um, saffron cloaked as well. Well, they look like this. They've got some chain mail on stuff. Okay. 
various different poses. You know, I, I particularly like this pose a lot. Um, but um, yeah, I'm not going to be cogitating about what color to paint their uh, their clothing too much on them. So um, the Gallo Glass guys, Gallo Glass, Gallo Glitch, Gallo Glock. I need to find a pronunciation guide and find out exactly how to say that. Uh, it's spelled Gallo Glitch. I doubt that's how it's said. So I'm not a Gaelic is not one of the two languages I speak or pronounce crop properly. So, um, okay, John Peter, uh, we can now travel in most of Europe, but we're finding that the returnees are bringing COVID-19 back. It's not a catastrophe with only 9,000 infected total. Most things are open. Yeah. We're actually thinking of, um, we're going to do a European cruise this year for my daughter's 15th. And, uh, well, obviously that didn't happen. I haven't gotten a chance to go to Europe yet. And I have a feeling that, um, it's going to be a while before I do, um, whether I want to or not, but just all the conditions and stuff. So that's, I'm not heartbroken about it, you know, um, luckily we live in a time that there's enough. I could get on the Google mobile and, uh, and go down the streets of uh, Hamburg if I wanted to <laughs> and at least get a glimpse of what it's like. So, uh, it just is what it is. So, yeah, I love that Google mobile. I was looking up something the other day, several years ago. I want to say it was two years ago. And I found myself looking down the streets in Santorini. Okay, so that's the Google Mobile somehow, or someone on a bike, decided to put a street view of Santorini, okay, which is, you know, obviously it's on the island of Terra, and we're blew up from the volcano and stuff like that. But I'm going down this tiny little street, scrolling down the street, and, you know, you could see the kind of sp the specials that they had for for the food, they had like a chalkboard there that showed what specials they had. And then a little bit further, there was a dog sitting on the side of a road with his other two dog buddies just kind of looking. And it was, it was those wonderful technology that we, we have nowadays is just, uh, just really amazing. Not necessarily for the point of snooping on people. I'm not really interested in that, but just be able to go to Germany and take a look at what the, you know, to, to get an inkling. So I think that we're really fortunate that that uh, we're able to um, travel um, uh, virtually like that. And, um, you know, at least we're able to do that, so. But I don't know when we're going to go to Europe. Never been. It's just... It's more of an issue. It's you just have to take too much time off of work in a row to go. It's that's the issue more than anything else. So, um, Now we got to lighten up this bow a tiny little bit more. Tiny little bit more. Okay. Now, cape. Right? Or are we going to do hair? Let's do the cape. Let's do the cape next. Um, I did a gray one last time. Well, damn it, this guy's Irish. We've got to have some green on him, even, even if it's not necessarily 100% realistic. We're going to make this guy have a dark green cape. So let's see what kind of dark green we're going to use. Not that one. That one's too bright. Let me stand up here. Let's see if I can reach over here. And... Uh... 
we can use this one as a base. Oh, the Zapanza series. German. We're not going to do the German dark yellow first. We're going to use this one. But we're not going to mix it with gasoline or other oil like they did in the war to, to get the colors flowing. Some of those stories that you hear, some of those World War II stories you hear 20, 30 years ago, they always stick with you. That's that's one on the German tanks. and My favorite one of all time is I have this book on the T German, uh, the Russian tank, T-34, and how the early version had, how they got, and they had to pull them out round by round and had a fake floor. And then it was just, just the way described that in this one book that I have was just insane. Like insane how you would have to deal with that along with all the other problems that they have to deal with. But I guess my, I guess my black is dry now a little bit. John Peter, I live close to X A N T E N. Zanten? Zanten, a Roman archaeological park close to the Rhine. If you like tanks, you have to visit Overloon in the Netherlands. 45 minutes from my house. Google it. Overloon, I will. I will look at that. Um, the problem with some of these sites, though, with tanks is, and this happens with all museums, if you know something about, a lot about something, you go to a museum and you find out, like, that, or that's the wrong version of that, or, you know, uh, one of the places I always wanted to go to and I never got a chance to go to was the Aberdeen Proving Grounds here in the United States. And for those of you that don't know, this was a place where uh, it was an ordinance proving ground for the United States Army, I want to say, that they had a lot of relics that they brought back from World War II, captured vehicles. And I think they had like one of each. So they had like a, a Ferdinand and a hunting tiger. And, you know, of course, there were allied vehicles there uh, outside. Um, they had poured concrete over where just a big grass field and they had poured concrete where the tracks would go when they were all sitting out there. And they had been out there for, I don't know, 50 years. And it was, um, they dismantled that area and, 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 um, and took the tanks. And I think they split them in several different facilities. And they're working on putting them in, in different locations because they were just, they were getting damaged by, the, by Mother Nature too much. And in one of our trips up to Historicon, I wanted to go up there to go visit them. Um, but they had been moved. And uh, the place where they are so, um, hasn't been open to the public yet. So that is definitely one of those things that uh, I would have loved to go, go to is to check out, um, check out those World War II vehicles. Um, definitely would have dug that for sure. But um, there's a new movie on Amazon Prime called 234. You should watch it. It is absolutely awesome. Okay, so... Uh, John, I don't know if you were here when you were talking about my skirmish game in World War II. Okay. Um, how it's like super anal retentive and that kind of stuff. And I talked about like what I, what, what I envision is like the slow fighting scene towards the end of Saving Private Ryan where they're fighting in one room. That's the kind of stuff I want to simulate in World War II skirmish. I'm not interested in moving platoon around. I'm, I'm interested in happening when they're fighting, you know, over a room or, or a building or something like that. The, this remind me of the kind of skirmish gaming that I like to do. It like the part where they fire a shell and it, okay, roll to see where it hits and it ricochets and that kind of, that's textbook, the kind of gaming I like to do. Um, I love the speculus uh, on so many levels. It was it was like um, 
it was like Grand Theft Auto me beats uh <laughs> a World War II thing, you know. Uh <laughs> you know, and it's a Russian movie, so now you run into um I've tried watching some Russian movies and and they're just so over the top propaganda-ish that it, that's pretty funny. Um But you know, I, I take it. You know, I, I get it that that's 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 how it is. But the special effects in that are amazing, especially when you're when you're simulating things like there's a scene where one of the shells uh, hits the Russian tank and it doesn't penetrate, and they're basically shocked. For very many movies, show that aspect of it. But uh, yeah, I did enjoy the special effects of it immensely, immensely. So um, yeah. That's um, that's pretty cool, but that's the kind of gaming I like to do. When you're talking about World War II, that's what I'm interested in, in doing. But yeah, spectacular special effects. Uh, yeah, that is... Uh, I've watched a couple of those Russian propaganda type films done nowadays, and they're, they're, they're funny. I guess... Um, Because they're propagandish. Because I don't like the American over-the-top propaganda films that they do. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, that was uh, that was some crazy special effects. I wish more movies had stuff like that in them. You know. But I get so many of those mi movies mixed up. I'm not, I don't remember if that was the same movie that had a T-34, that a Russian tank that was hiding in a haystack in 41, like the Germans were attacking in 1941. And what I really like is, I'll give you this, I don't like the Russian movies because they have this really high propaganda thing, even, even now, nowadays. But they do a really good job mocking up the German vehicles. You know, they don't just throw something together. I mean, they make vehicles that look like, you know, real Panzer IIs and Panzer threes and fours, or really close approximation. I tried watching one the other day with the daughter, and I don't blame her for not wanting to watch it because I got bored of it too. And it's called something like Panfilov's 28. And it's like these group of guys that were like Moscow's last defense or whatever. And it was like, it was a whole lot of talking. We were like an hour and a half into the movie and no action happened. I'm like, okay. And we were having issues with our streaming service at the time. So we just kind of uh, didn't finish watching it in front stuff because it is just the battle of the bastards. At least here in the, in the U.S., which bad guy do you want to play? You know? <laughs> So uh, I prefer to have a conflict, not black and white, but uh, black and black, so to speak. Uh, both sides are just as, uh, or white and white. Both of both sides are just as bad as each other. So I've all as as it is. Um, that's my preferred theater for World War II. So. I'm not one of those people that likes American stuff just because I'm American. Uh, quite the contrary, I prefer not to play American stuff because I already am American. So I'd rather play somebody I can do funny voices with. So I prefer to do something Commonwealth or, or something like that. We used to do a lot of naval gaming in the day, and uh, I never liked the U.S. stuff. I always liked the, I liked the Mediterranean theater with the British and Italians or, of course, the German and the... And the British stuff. That's what I like the. That's what I like the game. So, uh, John Peter, I've been there every few years in the last thirty, and really noticed the changes. Uh, Fango Wolf, hello, Fango Wolf. Uh, British early war. It's the movie where the tank crew are POWs and they're forced to, in a training the Germans and Russian tactics. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's. That's just, that's a ridiculous plot. But that's okay. That's that's not why I watched it. You know, um, you find, if you're like a, if you're a historical gamer, you're going to find problems with the plot in every movie. It's just, you know, they're not made for us. Okay, they're, 
they're not made they're not geared for us they're geared for the for the general public so um yeah that's the one where they were trying to worry about how they were going to get gas and that kind of stuff <laughs> great it was it was it's the slow motion special effects that's just that stuff's amazing i like it i like it almost wanted me to pull out my world war ii stuff and start painting but um no, I'd have to paint so much of that stuff. And I think the days of me supplying all the troops for a game, all the figures and all the painting are just done. I just don't want to do that anymore because it's twofold. It's not only is it so much work, but it's also is, you know, if you, and you guys know that you guys that are, that are miniatures painters, you know that other miniatures painters, when they pick up your figures, they know where to grab them from. They know how much time is involved in you painting your figures. So they're careful. But people off the street or other gamers that don't have figures, they just, uh, they're, uh, is ham-fisted? Would that be the correct term? They're ham-fisted about how they pick them up. And I just, I can't handle the stress of people damaging my stuff. So, um, yeah, I'd rather just supply my own figures that I'm going to handle. And, you know, I still botch them up, okay? I mean, I, I can still, you know, bend a pike or something like that. But I can control this butthole right here, okay? I can't control other people. I can get mad at myself. Uh, I can self-flagellate uh, later and, uh, and then do penance. But, um, yeah, I gave up going to conventions for like five or six years in the, late, in the mid-90s because I had a bad experience with someone just wanted to just uh, be really disrespectful to, with my figures. And uh, I'm just like, you know what? This isn't worth it. Um, but that's back when I was supplying like all the stuff for a game. You know, now it's like, okay, you can pretty much play a game of DBA and nobody touches the other person's figures. Um, so. Okay, we're just... We're bringing this up to the, this green. And see, what can we use for highlighting? Well, I could use a white, that's gonna make it look chalky. I could use a yellow, that'll brighten it up some. Or I can use like a chalky yellow, like this color right here. I think that's what I'm gonna do and kind of split the difference between the two. And this guy will be red haired. And the other one, because it's actually the same pose. This is, of all the Soloi figures that I've done, these are the only two that is exactly the same pose. Uh, I needed some bow uh, Soloi. Well, that's what they said they were in the DBA list as they were born. I figured, ah, I'll go ahead and, uh, I'll go ahead and paint them that way. I I'm not necessarily that strict about uh, that, especially because Soloi is a Soloi, so it doesn't really matter. But, um, but I figured I'll go ahead and make them bow, bow armed because it says that's what the two of the, two of the six Soloi are. So I went ahead and entertained that. And um, I didn't have a, a, a fourth pose that was different because all the Soloi figures are all different. Um, I thought that was kind of cool to give them that kind of personality. But um, yeah, but we're going to paint these two guys differently. So uh, even though they still have the same uh, yellow shirt, it's a little bit different. We'll give him a different cape. I think old red, one of the other colors that was common was uh, dark red. So we may do a dark red or we may, maybe we'll do a blue, but uh, just the cape part. So this seemed kind of the thing that these guys all had was they had this saffron colored uh, tunic or this long shirt. So we're gonna, we got that motif going on with, um, with all of the figures. Lighten it up a little bit more. 
I guess today's ramble was uh, heavily on movies. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. Just start rambling and who knows what we'll talk about. As long as we're not talking about politics or religion, we should be good. I don't like talking about things that people don't see common ground. You know, this is a hobby. You know, we should find things that um, we have in common with, not things that divide us. That doesn't do any good. We're not going to change anybody's mind, so keep it all positive. No politics, religion, no beer either. People are real particular about beer. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, one little bit more, more, a little bit more lightened up. The highest of highlights on this. And what else does this guy get? His hair. His hair, his belt, his arrows. We'll do we'll we'll get to all that tonight for sure. I'm not stopping until this dude's done. I don't want to look at this guy anymore. I want to be done with him. Okay, let's get a little stand here where you guys can see what they, one of my favorite things to do is paint cloth that looks like, that you try to paint something because it's a lead miniature. Let's see if we can get this picture in here. And let's see if we can zoom in. Yeah, and of course, it, it doesn't come out great with this camera because I think I'm limited to 720. And um, I know you can get more than that. I know we can get a 1080 and it. I think it has to do with how much live stuff you do a month. So if we do these enough, hopefully it's a little bit better. But still, the, when you end up doing the varnishing on the figure, it makes a big difference. It, it just brings out all the differenti differentiation of the, uh, they just pop. I don't know how to describe it other than to say that um, it's really amazing after you put the one thing down. Okay, so we're going to do his belt now. Uh, we're going to do the arrows and then his belt. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And uh, see if there's any maintenance issues that we need to do. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Kevin. Hello, Kevin Brownell. Um John Mifkovic, what are you going to do in retirement when you don't have DBA armies to paint? I need a lead for. I could probably put together 40 armies and not buy any more lead. So at the rate I'm going, if, if I'm going to be really crazy and say three a year, I don't have to buy any more figures. <laughs> What am I going to do in retirement? I can't wait to find out. Um, I'm not going to be one of those people that's going to be, oh, I got to work to have something to do. Oh, no. We have plenty to do. Um, especially if we continue doing this whole filming thing because 
I don't like doing this as a solitary thing. It's boring to sit there and paint all by your lonesome. Uh, so, and this is something I can, uh, I can, uh, I can share as well. So, you know, um, um, this whole army, I already had all of the ground troops for it. I did order the mounted, which is interesting because I'm going to do unboxing on uh, on the figures. I've never ordered from this figure manufacturer, and it's they're kind of an obscure one. In other words, they're not one of the uh, one of the. Uh, but uh, they've got some mounted figures for this army that uh, would be appropriate. So I'm going to do an unboxing video of them when they come in. Now they did tell me that they are running they're very they're very busy and they're going to let me know when they ship i ordered them not this monday but the previous monday and apparently they still haven't shipped yet so that means they had to cast them or something like that and um they they did mention that their parcels from the uk of course the, of course they're coming from the uk all of my figures that i like come from the uk so um they, I'm trying to zoom this out here, and uh, they uh, they said that their parcels have been taking two to eight weeks. So we will see uh, if that is the case, but uh, that should give us enough time to, I don't think that's gonna slow down my process because we've got uh, 12 blade guys still to do uh, right after these. Even if the mounted came in tomorrow, I'm not going to, um, I'm not gonna jump on the mounted. We're gonna do the blades first. And then uh, the mounted still isn't here. We're gonna rent, we're gonna do some Scots options. We're gonna do the Edward de Bruce's uh, Scottish pikeman and the nightstand. And then if the mounted, because I already have figures that work for that, but it's not gonna slow us down. We're gonna keep keep, keep painting Irish until uh, the mounted come home. So um, we got plenty to do. I'm not gonna be discouraged about that. But I appreciate them telling me it's gonna be taking a while. So I'm not you know looking in the, in the mailbox. So I'm one of those people that as soon as I order the figures, I'm already, okay, where are they? Where are they going? Where are they going to be here? When they, you know, even if I don't need them, they're just, that's just how I am. <laughs> so, uh, but I've got plenty to do. Um, and yeah, I don't have to buy any figures probably ever. Uh, I will, you know, but, um, but I'm set for a while. I've just bought too many at, a, at flea markets and stuff like that. Um, And, and figures that I like to paint. Now, there's a couple of manufacturers that I really I wish I got a chance to, there's three manufacturers in particular that I really wish I got a chance to paint their stuff. And they are, in no particular order, Legio Heroica, Kurosan, and Forged in Battle. The thing about all three of those is they all came on the scene relatively late. And what I mean is none of those companies, I think, is more than 10 years old. And by the time they came out with figures that I'd like to paint, I had already gotten the first, those figures of those armies from other manufacturers through whatever means. So unless I'm going to just say, I'm not going to paint these Normans, I'll just use Normans for an example, uh, made by Old Glory, and I'm going to sell them and see if somebody buys them and then you which by the way look gorgeous um then i'm just not going to rebuy buy figures i just i don't see replacing um figures I already have with other ones that i might want to paint more and that kind of happened to me with the um with the uh with the ottomans i was building my ottoman project and one of those manufacturers in particular and i'm not going to tell you which one and as soon as get done with an army they come out with figures for it so um okay it's Kurosan. <laughs> i know they're not really doing that but um it's just ironic that it happened with the ottomans and it's happened with several other armies the french ordinance as soon as i get done painting them they come up with figures for them and that are really really cool but it's like i'm not going to trash my figures and and repaint them again you just it's just one of those things i'm just going to have to deal with but um but yeah, um, I wish I got a chance to paint those armies. And um, of all of them, I really like those forged and battle figures. Man, they're just, they're beautiful looking. They really are, have a lot of personality. But 
um, if I don't get a chance to, it's not a big deal because I have other figures that I like. And actually, you know what I'm getting a kick out of? I'm getting a kick out of painting some of these figures that are, I'm not gonna say they're bad, they're just lackluster and just kind of uh, making them look, uh, getting them, giving them their time in the, uh, in the spotlight. Um, so, yeah, I'm enjoying painting these figures, these Essex figures that everybody's seen that have been around for, I don't know, what, 20 years? And, uh, yeah, they paint up well. Everybody knows that the new figures paint up well, but, you know, hey, how do these, how do older figures paint up? I'm kind of getting a kick out of doing that. And I already have them, so, um, yeah. But I don't have to buy lead for, I probably don't have to buy lead at all. Uh, unless I'm doing some of these, you know, there's a couple of armies that I don't have like all of the troop types for. So I've kind of decided if I decide to paint them, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint, I'm going to start on them and I'm going to start working on the elements that I already have the figures for. And then when I'm too far enough along where I can work my way out of it, then I'll order the remaining figures so I can finish the army. In other words, I'm too far into it where I'm just going to, I'm not going to say, well, I'm not going to work on the rest of the army because I've kind of gotten bored, you know. Um, and I've got a, I've got a handful of armies like that, so. But I'm kind of hooked on, I'm, built, I'm building these obs obscure, more obscure figures or figures that aren't top tier and also armies that aren't top tier, you know, armies that you don't see very often. I mean, nobody needs to see any more Carthaginians or Romans or you know, that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm kind of hooked on building some of these crappier arms because they make really, really fun games. They make really, really fun games. So you guys saw that the series that we did on Saloy Silliness really hooked on making crappy armies like that that are very light. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that. That that was the appeal of doing this army in particular. So, um But retirement, unfortunately, is close to 20 years away, So, uh, which is a shame because I sure could use it right about now. <laughs> I got a lot to paint, but uh, just one of those things. I'll have plenty of stuff to do when I'm retired, so hopefully I don't get the shakes with painting and... Um, and which hasn't happened yet. And uh, the eyesight isn't a, eyesight isn't a big problem. So didn't have any eyesight issues at all until four years ago. And now I just paint without my contacts in. So I've got a built in uh, plus six and a half loop. So instead of painting in 2020 with contacts in like I used to, yeah, I, my my close up vision just kind of you know that whole once you turn forty two forty three or whatever it was so my vision hadn't changed in thirty years and um, but it's not a problem that's uh, I'm all up in it I'm. I'm seeing more of the detail. Not that I wasn't seeing it before, but maybe I'm aware of it a little bit more. Okay, so that's the feathers on the on the um, on the arrows. Um, John says I have 15 years myself until retirement. I'm still adding to my lead pile. Yeah, I've kind of stopped. I'll still buy stuff really cheap that I can't leave like, like at a flea market, but I'm not going out. I, don't, I just kind of envisioned, okay, poof, I bought it. Now what am I going to do with it? Oh, just look at them. I kind of talk myself out of it, you know, and I feel better about it because I don't want to buy something and then not do anything with it. That's like the, the biggest crime as far as I'm concerned because I've done that many times. So I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, um, now, if there's something that is um, available at a flea market or um, 
I've never seen before. That happened to me the other day. I'm not the other day. Um, was it last year? I think it was last Historicon. I went and some guy had these figures at, at a flea market that I had never, and I surf a lot of figures, okay? And I had never seen these figures before. In fact, if I remembered where I put them. But um, they're in my medieval hundred years war type thing. But I had never seen these from any manufacturer. So I know that they're not minifigs. I know that they're not old glory. I know that they're not Leggio. Right? They're older figures. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure who the manufacturer is. But once I saw them, I'm like, oh, I got to pick these things up because they're, they're cool. You know, I like the mix and match stuff. And they're, uh, they were some feudal or, or medieval type of uh, foot knights that I had never seen before. And um, yeah, those guys are all like individual when I paint them. So. Um, looking for a belt color. Uh, let's go with, uh, this should suffice just fine. Um, I had to pick them up, uh, because I didn't know that, uh, who made them, but, um, they were, um, they were a manufacturer I'd never seen. So, uh, Mike's models. No, they were not Mike's models. Definitely were not Mike's. Mike's models have a very distinct look. Um, and, uh, Damn it, you guys are going to make me look for them. All right, I, I fell for it. I'm going to go look for them. I think I know exactly where they're at. This is, uh, I'm so easy, right? I think they're here. They're one of these two places. I saw them recently. Okay. This is bag from uh, glasses come from the uh... <laughs> good man show the bling yeah I, I need to do a bling thing all right so please apologize if I don't figure this figure but uh, this fango wolf guy sent me on a, <laughs> a curveball no that's good I enjoy looking at my own uh, at my own bling so to speak so now hopefully uh, you guys get a good look at what this what these are so this is uh this is my bling from Historicon 2019. Okay, so um, I think I won this in a tournament at one of our local cons. So let me let me take this chat box off so I can see what I'm even farm type looking thing from Blue Moon. I don't think I purchased this because my I prefer uh, when I'm doing buildings. I prefer six millimeter buildings for my 15 millimeter figures so that the buildings are actually more in scale with. Um, the game scale more than the figure scale. I prefer them, but um, somebody I think said that I had won this in a tournament or whatever. So um, I don't know why it's in this bag. I, I don't think it happened in Historicon, but uh, let's see. Dark Age Pit House from Timecast. And these, this, this brand, they don't have a huge selection for things for DBA type things, these battle scale war game buildings, but their stuff is as good a quality as Timecast. Um, part of a village that I saw buildings for that I'm going to be doing. So uh, a thatch timber frame barn, also from Battle Scale. These are in six millimeter. Okay. Okay, what else we got here? Thatched timber shack. Okay, cute little house. Oh, a couple of things here that I saw and I just wasn't going to leave there. I'd say they're my pride and joy, but I haven't painted them yet. But we're going to have fun with this. This is a pig pen, a stone pig pen. Almost looks like a little brick oven there. Um, little wall. Cute little thing. And look at this. Boy, isn't this going to be a hoot. These are dark age roundhouses. They're gonna be in a little cluster here. Now I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something different when I put these on a base, uh, on, on a base for my village. Uh, I'm going to, obviously they're gonna be removable, but what I'm thinking is I could put a metal sheet underneath and uh, drill and put some of those rare earth magnets. So they'll, they'll stick to the base so that when they're traveling, they're not first village. And I think I'm gonna learn from that and try to do that. That's at least me thinking out loud what I plan on doing with them. 
Now, let's see if I didn't waste everybody's time. And Okay, so here's some museum figures. I had no interest in buying Byzantine, but this guy really wanted to get rid of them and he was selling them for a dollar a pack. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to take the Byzantines. You know, I'm not going to leave them there for a dollar a pack. Okay. We got five viewers. All I got to do is show some bling and people show up. <laughs> awesome. I love watching unboxing stuff too. So, um, yeah, I got some Byzantines and I think these are, these are from museum and they're, um, they're, these would be like a, uh, Marikian or a, um, um, uh, that period, maybe, uh, late Justinian period or, or Marikian type of, uh, Byzantines. So, but that's not what I was getting at. I was getting at these figures that, um, more Byzantines. I was getting at these figures that I wasn't going to leave there on the, uh, on the shelf. It's just two packs. And they didn't come in these packs per se. So I'm going to take this stuff and we're just going to pile, we're going to pack it right back up so we can get center stage for these mystery figures that I have no idea who makes them. Okay. And, um, he just got in a big grab bag. And, um, which I love going through. I love rummaging through figures. Okay. So, what do we got here? All right. See if you guys recognize these figures, who the manufacturer is. It might be Donington or something like that, but I don't recognize them. Okay, so we've got... See if we can get that on here. Oh, you're painting those museum Byzantines right now. Cool. Well, we can certainly use Byzantines in our group because none of us really have any. See if I can get a right thing. Okay, so we've got the guy here. Okay, foot guy. Let's put an Essex guy up here so you guys can compare. Okay, so they're, they're equivalent or maybe even smaller than the Essex, but I don't recognize who these guys are. Here's another guy, same pose. Maybe there, there's a figure company that is kind of obscure. They're rank and file. And I don't know if this might be what they are. I don't remember if they make war time period kind of guys. Um, and, and I don't, they're, I don't think they're any manufacturer that I have seen before. Okay, so I've got like four figures of these guys with axes. Okay, so these would be like, you know, if dismounted like uh, French Hundred Year War type. Uh, anyhow, this is this is one of them. They, they came loose. I, I, he just had a... Okay, that's one of them. One of the mystery... We'll leave Mr. Essex guy up there. Uh, okay. Let's stick with the whole sword and axe dude. Let's see what's in here. Okay, here's a different guy with an axe. And he's got almost a closed helm type thing. He won't stand up. He's got some flashing on there. Here's this guy's got a bass. They have a style I don't recognize. So they must be a figure manufacturer I don't have any figures of. Yeah, okay, so I got like four of each in this one. I've got these bassinet guys with a sword. Is it like a sugar loaf helm? With an ax. Yeah, more dismounted guys. You know me, I'll be mixing them in with other stuff that I have. But they're really kind of small. No, no idea who makes those guys. I said they're probably somebody who doesn't have pictures of them online. Otherwise, I'd recognize them. Trust me, I surf a lot. Or I have surfed. So that's my trivia. Figure trivia. And then we got, let's see what else we got here. Maybe you guys can recognize them from these figures because there's some kind of pole arms. Okay. This guy's got uh, some kind of armet slash bassinet type mixture. We got a, uh, oh, this guy looks like Henry V. For all you uh, 100 Years War English fans. I know there's... 
Okay, I don't recognize that figure. Here is another guy with a sword. Different pose. Uh, what else is different here? This guy has like a closed helm with one hell of a thing I wouldn't want to get hit by. A pole axe. And then maybe this is the most distinctive figure of all of them. He's got a bassinet and he's got a small flag. He's got a really small... Yeah. Not sure who makes these guys, but I like them. And you know me, I mix in all kinds of stuff, so... Um, all right, let's see what the crowd says. Let's see. Okay, is that Viking Forge? No, I don't think they're Viking Forge. I've, I've looked at all the Viking Forge stuff. Rank and file are 18 millimeter. Okay, feudal castings. Feudal castings used to have a lot of stuff online, and then they got bought out by, uh, I want to say their molds were taken by a couple different people. But I don't think these look like feudal castings. Some of the feudal casting stuff looks honestly kind of, I'm not a fan of some of, some of their castings. I don't think that's who these guys would be. Uh... Australian Greg, hello. I've seen that you're alive. How long do you think you'll be online? Uh, I don't know. It's 10.15 now. Maybe I'm still going to get that guy done. So we just took a little break here. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, they might be Thistle and Rose miniatures. They could be. Um, yeah, they could be. I, I've never seen pictures of Thistle and Rose. So, But I like them. I like who these guys are. They're very, they're pretty well detailed. Well, they're going to look great. We're going to make all this detail pop on them. So um, this guy's definitely Henry the Henry the Fifth. There's no doubt about it. That's what this guy is supposed to be. He's got like a little crown built in, and uh, yeah. So I won't be building a hundred years war in the army. Uh, Mitch and Luke each have one. So. I will be building, if I build one of those armies, it's going to be the French. So, um, I got a friend of mine who's, well, I don't think he plays DBA anymore, but he was, didn't like anything French, but he liked the French army because they were good. Hey, French are people too. I got no problem with French. I play anybody. You know what I like to say is all these nations, every one of their leaders was an asshole. So, I just enjoy playing the game. <laughs> All right, we'll put these guys away. So, that was a little sidetrack there of, uh, of uh, our grab bag here from Historicon uh, 2019. As you can see, I haven't made, done anything with those, that stuff yet. But that's okay, it's there. I may, I may never do anything with the Byzantines. But I just wasn't going to leave them there for a dollar a pack. So I took my $12 investment and, uh, and moved on. Okay, let's get, back to, let's get back to this guy, this red-haired guy with a mustache. We're going on an hour and 45 minutes of Tony's Ramble. All right. So let's go ahead and let's pick a color for the red hair base. This is always a good one. This uh, orange brown, we've got black that's still there. Let's get some of that orange brown there on the palette. You can see this thing is, I'm getting a lot of use out of this thing. It's not gonna survive. After this lawyer done, we're gonna, we're gonna pitch it and replace it. But most of this army, uh, unlike you would, what you would think, is not gonna have a whole lot of green. They're mostly this yellow saffron color. Um, So I'm going to take some artistic license, but, you know, it's a balance between some artistic license and then uh, trying to paint them as realistic as you can, or at least what's known. So that's always a challenge sometimes. Okay, so let's mix this a, um, let's get this zoomed out a little bit. Nope. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, mix some of this, um, what is this wrongly called? Orange brown. Ah, oh, I meant to get the light. I meant to get the other one. Oh, orange brown worked just fine. I thought I was grabbing this one. It's called light brown. I'm gonna make a joke on it being called wrong. See, it's almost the same color, light brown as opposed to orange brown. 
It's the same, but different. Because I always think they should be called light clay. Because that's what it looks like. So, all right, so we got our orange brown here and black. Whoa, way too dark, no problem. I actually did encounter, um, maybe a month ago, I actually encountered some mold on here. Some people have talked about getting mold on their wet palette. Nothing major, just tiny little specks in a few places. It started smelling kind of a, like an old British library. Not necessarily British library, but an old library. Um, so I ended up uh, washing this little thing and uh, with some dishwashing soap and, um, and to, you know, uh, not dishwashing soap, but uh, just hand washing soap. And, um, and it got the smell out just fine. It was tiny little bits that was, it wasn't even on the pad, it was just on the top. Um, they kind of, there were little flecks almost like this, nothing major, so. Um, I actually had that. I actually had that happen to me. I hadn't had it happen before. So. All right. So we don't want. We want to make sure we don't mess up this beautiful skin that uh, this guy has. And the mustache. Yeah, and after the hair, what did I get sidetracked and didn't get to do the belt? Damn it, man! I got to still have to do the belt. No problem. We can handle, we can handle the hair and a belt. And honestly, the hair is is kind of fun to do. Again, it falls into that category of some making. Those things are fun to do, or I enjoy doing them, anyways. Uh, Yeah, I need to do some of those unboxing videos, even if it's not new stuff. Like I said, I don't really need to purchase any new items, but it's fine. It's fun going through some of the some of the boxes that I have, and hmm, I wonder what's in here. I picked up one little box. Um, let's see, it was the last time it was being held at the Historicon in um, in Fredericksburg, so that would have been 2017. And I was looking through this box. It was a it was a box that was about this big. And I'm always looking for little bits and pieces. And this guy had some Italian Condotta Nights. And um, and he's like, you know, of course, everybody who sells something in the flea market, they want to get, they don't want to take it home. How much you want for the whole box? And I hate that whole bartering thing. Like, how much do you want for it? Well, I don't know. How much do you, that little game, like that car salesman game, I detest that game. Um, I just don't have it in my personality to do that. Just tell me how much it is. And, you know, because everybody's trying to get, get it for more than I, I just, I don't enjoy those games. Um, but anyhow, so I'm like, I'm not really, I'm just looking to see if there's anything in here I can use. And the guy goes, I'll give you the whole box for 10 bucks. And there was like seven elephants in there. You know, I didn't want to take every single figure out and I needed to know. And uh, yeah, there was a whole host of elephants in there. So, um... There might be an elephant army coming up at some point. Uh, I don't like elephants. I, I don't. I don't like them in gaming terms. They're fun as hell to paint, and they're cute. So you know that part isn't an issue. But uh, I don't think they're a uh, war-winning weapon. They don't. If, if I had my preference, I don't. Um, they're not. They're not a troop type that I that I'm very comfortable with them bringing me victory. Let's put it that way, because they take extra for pips to move around and stuff like that. So that automatically puts them in my, uh, the no confident vote category for me. But that doesn't mean I won't build those armies because as you guys well know, I'm not a fan of knights or war, especially not war band. And my uh, carriage guys I just finished from the desert are all knights and war band. But that doesn't keep me from building that army. I just, um, I don't want to build an army that is exactly like one I already have, troop type comp composition. So, um, yeah, 
anyhow, I've got a lot of, I've got some elephants to come up. So I've got, um, that should be coming at some point. Now, when I don't know, because, um, I definitely want to build a few of these armies that, as I like to say, armies that suck, you know, because they make good games. These, uh, light butterfly type armies make I don't know why this there's not much of this on here oh is this gonna are you gonna misbehave on me yeah let's uh, let's find out where our pin vice is there we go some more of this coming out there we go we don't need a whole lot just a little bit more and do we have a light live yellow yeah we've got this this light yellow here we can use to to highlight his um, his uh, red hairishness. So, all right. So let's just use this here, and hopefully we didn't go too far. Got to use this sparingly. Because we still want some of the brown underneath the show so that we get a little bit of that level of, uh, of the... Um, layers of the hair. All right, now we're going to, for a highlight, we're going to, we're going to grab some of this yellow and just do one level. Okay, let's do his belt. And the thing about the wet palette is, is it's not that I needed to stay wet this long, but look, I put some of this, uh, I put some of this orange brown color, and it may come to where the point where I get to paint this guy, I still have it alive, so to speak, so that I can reuse it and not have to put more on the wet there. It's gonna, it, it'll stay for probably four days. So. Um, if I was just painting on like a piece of plastic, which is what I was using before, um, there's no chance after 15 minutes, it's not workable anymore. So at least it gives me an opportunity to be able to use something, um, a chance to, you know, to use paint, but it's mostly a time saving thing. Not necessarily. I don't want to waste paint because as you can see, even with the little amount of paint I'm using, most of my paints being wasted, there's just no way around that you know that's just one of those things um it doesn't bother me it's just a it's a time saving thing being able to not have to stop what you all right so we got this belt to do And then that'll be it. We're gonna we're gonna call it a night after this belt is done, and then that'll leave us with one figure to paint of Saloy, or one figure minus the uh, tunic. So we certainly, hopefully, we can get these guys done for um, by the weekend, end of the weekend. So um, then we can move on to some blades. So. I'm not concerned about not getting the, the, the mounted here in time because I've got lots of things I can work on. 
just on this army. So now without hopping on to something else. So but the manufacturers said they were pretty busy, so that means that um, people are buying up stuff. I don't know. You guys bought any uh, more hobby stuff since this COVID thing happened? I really haven't, but I already have a huge backlog. So um, it really wasn't anything and no change for me as from a standpoint of that. Um, but the funny thing is, is that with the perspective of not having any conventions anytime soon, you would think I would be less likely to be paying things than if I would that have been if there had been a convention, but I'm actually paying more. So maybe because uh, we just kind of have our own designs of things that we're looking forward to playing, like on videos. I got some cool videos that I have planned on some of these specialty armies. And I'm, look, I'm looking forward to doing them more than I would be in just playing a certain army at a convention. So um, I've got about 30 armies right now without morphing anything. So I've got uh, plenty of choices. So... But I'm painting more frequently than I ever have. So that's a good thing. Okay, and unfortunately they decided to put a damn buckle on this guy. So if they put a damn buckle, you know what that means? I'm gonna have to paint a damn buckle, which is nothing but it's another step okay that should be enough of that okay that's all she wrote folks this guy's history well you know he's not varnished yet but he's complete Let's get our little foam thingy. I don't know where this came from. Looks like almost like it came with my computer or something like that. Like a packing, packing cube for that. So this guy is done. Let's see if we can hit the zoom, zoom there, please. And this light makes it seem more washed. This guy is complete. Little barefooted redhead dude. So, anyhow, that's uh, one more Saloy left to do. Come on, zoom out. You can do it. Pinch out. Well, kind of. Anyhow, so we've got uh, these two guys done, and now this third one done. So we just have this guy to do next, and uh, we'll get a chance to do a little bit of him in the morning. But, uh, but anyhow, that's a wrap. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it, found something useful. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what's wrong with you? Don't forget to subscribe and, uh, and uh, hit that little bell there as well so you can get uh, notified of anything, uh, any new videos coming up. I appreciate it. It's helpful for the channel. It gives us some increased visibility. And... Um, with any luck, we'll have another video tomorrow night. I'm not going to tell you what it's about, but uh, I think you guys like it. That's what the plan is. I don't want to give away too much information in case uh, plans fall through and we're not able to do it. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be trying to film more often than we, than we have been. So, which is still a lot more often than anybody else for DBA stuff. So, hopefully you guys enjoy that kind of thing. But anyways, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for joining me. You guys have a good night. Bye-bye.